I definitely recommend uh, Engineering World Health at UIC, especially to electrical and computer engineers. My name's Joshua Schubert. I grew up in Lamont, a suburb south of here, and I just graduated this past May with a degree in computer engineering. At UIC, I've been a member of their student chapter of Engineering World Health for the past two years. And it had been mentioned a couple of times about this program called the Summer Institute that Engineering World Health runs at the national level, where they send students, undergraduate students, to places all over the world, Nicaragua, Rwanda, um, Nepal. And it was always like in the background, like, oh, that'd be really cool to do. But it wasn't until my senior year that I made the decision that, hey, maybe I'll actually do this. And so I talked to um, Dr. Mary Kochi, who is the faculty advisor for the chapter of Engineering World Health, and you know, sat down with her and said, like, hey, how can we make this happen? Um, I applied, I got accepted, and I got funding partially from UIC. And so went over there, it was a two month long program. The first month was spent entirely in the capital city, Kigali. And after that, me and my partner, Jeff, we got sent to the city of Kamembe in Western Rwanda, right on the border of the DRC. And we worked at the hospital called Gahundwe Hospital. So when we arrived, they had a ton of equipment waiting for us. It wasn't just medical equipment. I mean, they had some, it was oxygen concentrators, centrifuges, but they had other things too, like power tools, jigsaws, um, cast saws. Actually, on the first day that we were at the hospital, the technicians we were working, at, working with took us on a tour of all the buildings, all the departments, and one of the places they took us to was their water tank. And the way it was set up is they had, they had an underground reservoir that would fill up with water from like the water company, and then they had a water tank that was about 12 feet above ground that they used to supply water to the whole hospital. And the problem was the pumping had to be done manually. So they had turned the pump on when there was no water in the above ground tank and turn it back off when it was full. Problem with that is you don't know that there's no water until you, you know, turn a faucet and nothing comes out of it, which can become a huge problem in a hospital. <laughs> when you need water and there's just no water there. So our solution was to develop a control circuit that used sensors at the top and the bottom of the tank that would turn the pump on and off automatically to make sure that the technicians didn't have to, have to turn that pump on anymore. In order to get the parts for this control circuit, we had to go back to the capital city, Kigali, and go to this market called Kazi Nikazi that was essentially a circuit boneyard. You'd come up to them with a picture and the name of the part you wanted, and they start scouring through piles of circuit boards until they found a match and rip it right out of the board and sell it to you for pennies. <laughs> The final cost of the whole project was under $15 after everything was accounted for. So the, the technicians I worked with were very happy when we got the pump system online because that meant that they didn't have to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to come flip a switch to turn the pump on again. So it was a very practical improvement for their life because now they weren't on call anymore. They could sleep through the night. So even just that little change I think makes a big difference for them. At the end of the program, all the teams met back in Kigali for a conference that included the students and also the technicians from all the hospitals in Rwanda. And at that conference, me and my partner Jeff presented everything we did at our hospital, including this pump project. And after talking about it, one of the technicians in the back said, hey, like, our pumping system is the same at our hospital. Like, can we have what you made? What I ended up doing was I created like a, a technical user manual for the pump system and also created some circuit files so that anyone who wanted the project could just go to anywhere in Kigali that had a makerspace and print out their own board. So the manual covered not just on how to build your own, but also if it stops working, you know, try these things because this is a problem a lot of times when equipment is either donated or made for developing countries is they give it to them and then they leave. And when it breaks, they don't know what to do. They either don't have the manuals or they don't have replacement parts, so it just stays broken. So we wanted to create something that when it inevitably breaks, they can bring it back online without our help. I'm happy that I did it.
I like to describe it as like mountain climbing. The actual act of climbing the mountain is very difficult and it's hard on your body, but you're always happy that you did it after the fact because you just always have that accomplishment that, hey, I climbed that mountain. And I feel the same way about this trip. I think what led to me wanting to do this program was my time here with the UIC chapter of Engineering World Health. And through the years, we you know, developed these devices to be implemented in developing countries. But I wanted to know what it was really like on the ground. Because before going to Rwanda, it's just, you know, someone telling you, oh, it's, it's this way, or you read about it, oh, it's, you know, they have these problems. But when you actually go and visit the countries, you remove those assumptions and those abstractions, and you replace them with facts. And with those facts, you can then come back and develop things with uh, a much more educated viewpoint on the problems that actually need to be solved. I would definitely recommend uh, Engineering World Health at UIC, especially to electrical and computer engineers, because a lot of times you can think of a device that you'd like to make for you know, Vietnam, Rwanda, or other developing countries, but unless you can power it and give it a brain, so to speak, it never gets off the ground. And that's where electrical and computer engineers come in. And that's why they're so important, not just at Engineering World Health, at UIC, but in the medical device industry worldwide. So what's next for me? Well, after I got back from this program, I'm not stopping with medical devices. Um, I'm actually going to continue my education and getting a PhD from Johns Hopkins, where I hope to continue my research in developing medical devices, not just for the first world anymore, but the whole developing world too now. As it stands right now, my dream job right now it would be to go to a work for Intuitive Surgical and develop the next generation of the Da Vinci robot because that's one of the things I'm passionate about is robotic surgery and how it can decrease the prices of surgery.